Hello and welcome to another video in my Out and About series of films. Um, today I'd like to talk to you about the Roman fort at Richborough in Kent, close to Sandwich. Nowadays the most notable feature of the site are these impressive stone walls. Um, but in fact these date from fairly late in the Roman period of Britain um, from the late 3rd century and they're the walls of the Saxon shore fort that was built here. But the site actually dates back to AD 43 when the Roman army um, invaded Britain under the Emperor Claudius. And Richborough is actually the site of where the Roman army first landed close to Dover and where they formed a defensive beachhead. These days Thanet is joined to Kent but um, in Roman times it was separated from the mainland by a channel known as the Wonsum Channel and Richborough was actually situated on a promontory of land um, on the south side of the channel so it was in a very good uh, defensive position where it could be supplied by sea and the promontory could be cut off by a defensive rampart so it made a very strong beachhead position so aside from julius caesar's brief invasion of britain in the previous century um, this is actually the spot where the roman legions first set foot on british soil and the first thing they did was to place a defensive ditch right the way across the promontory. You can just make it out on the right hand side of this photograph. This is a close up of the ditch here. Um, it ran right the way across the promontory and had a palisade behind it. Just here there was a gate leading into the beachhead position. As far as I'm aware it was an unnecessary precaution because the local inhabitants didn't attempt to expel the invader and it wasn't long before the earthworks and palisade were taken down and uh, the town of Richborough grew up and became quite a thriving port and was the basically the gateway into Britain. At the centre of the site there's this large cruciform mound which was actually the foundations of a monumental gateway that was built. The gateway was quite an impressive piece of architecture about 25 metres high um, it was built around AD 85, would have been one of the first things that any visitor to Roman Britain saw as they arrived at the port. It would have been faced in marble and decorated with bronze castings and sculpture and uh, it had an archway facing in each of the cardinal points of the compass. This is a model of it in the nearby uh, museum. There's a small museum on the site. The arch was a very strong statement about Roman imperial power. Um, these are a few of the fragments that are left of the decoration that was on it. Marble castings. This is a piece of bronze casting of a cloak, some hinges, odd bits and pieces, and this is the prow of a ship that featured somewhere on the monument. And here are some marble slabs that were later used as gaming boards. The area to the east of the site is now dry land, but in Roman times the sea came right up to this point here. Um, now 
um, the eastern side of the fort has just fallen away and uh, you can just about make out there a railway line um, which demolished a large part of the eastern side of the site as well and behind the trees there as well you'll see in a minute is uh, the river Stour there it is um, which is all that really remains of the Wonsome Channel and then to the west um, is the start of Watling Street and uh, these houses are in exact alignment with the western side of the arch so the modern day cart track isn't exactly the straight Roman road but those houses lie exactly on the line of the first Roman road to be built in Britain in the northeastern corner of the site um, there was a Mancio, which was a building for important uh, persons passing through Richborough. There isn't much left of the Mancio, but um, on top of that was built this Roman bath, um, and you can still see the various uh, baths and plunge pools and so on. And then around the middle of the third century, uh, Richborough as a town began to diminish and there was an obvious need to improve the defensive capabilities. So these ditches were dug, defensive ditches and ramparts, and the tower actually became a central feature of um, a fort. So rather than being an ornamental gateway, it actually became um, a lookout position with a commanding view over the Wonsome Channel. But the ditches actually avoided going through the remains of the Roman bathhouse, as you can see here. So um, there was clearly the intention of building the larger walls that you can see around here um, and the ditches themselves were just a temporary fix until these walls could be built um, and the large stone walls actually date from about 25 to 50 years after the ditches the ditches and the later stone walls represent a serious political crisis in the Roman Empire um, because this is now the time when uh, tribes are beginning to breach the uh, outer frontiers of the Roman Empire across the Rhine and it's in the late third century that you begin to see Saxon and Frankish um, piratical raids all along the English Channel the Romans were obliged to respond to these raids by forming a fleet known as the Classis Britannica, um, which patrolled the channel and used these forts um, as basis. One of the naval commanders was a chap called Carousius who um, was accused of allowing the pirates to plunder various places um, before responding to their raids and then seizing the pillage that they'd taken and keeping it for himself. So he eventually declared himself Emperor of Rome, um, but based himself in Britain. And um, he was eventually assassinated by one of his ministers, but for a while, um, Carousius was nominally Emperor of Rome but living in Britain. Some of the Saxon shore forts, um, Pevensey for instance, may even have been built during um, Carousius's brief spell of power 
but that's not the case in Richborough where archaeologists have found coins dating from his, from his reign um, above the layer of the foundations of the, of the walls of the Saxon shore fort here. The walls would have been pretty impressive. They would have been crenellated, faced in stone. Um, the condition of the walls as you see them now, they've been robbed. Um, the sort of pockmarked holes in them are where the scaffolding was originally installed to build them. Um, and there's a double layer of ditches outside of the walls. So they would have been formidable defences, but you do get that impression of uh, an empire under siege. This is an interesting feature. It's a Christian baptismal font inside the area contained by the walls. Um, but dating from the uh, Roman period, so this isn't after St Augustine's arrival in Kent in the 6th century. This actually dates to the Christian era, um, but the Roman occupation of Britain, so it's one of few uh, buildings, uh, Christian buildings, remaining from that period. There would have been a small wooden church around the outside of it. So after the Roman withdrawal from Britain in 410, uh, the fort was abandoned. Richborough would still have existed as a small town, but Sandwich had really taken over from it as the uh, major port in the area. Um, the walls over the centuries have been gradually eroded and robbed for their stone, as you can see. Christianity returned to Britain at the end of the 6th century. This is the outline of a, an Anglo-Saxon church within the walls, uh, which probably dates from the 10th century. It's called the Chapel of St Augustine. Um, the outline you can see is probably 12th century. Unlike the earlier period, um, Christians at this time weren't prepared to tolerate uh, the Roman gods. And this statue of Demeter was actually found in the foundations of the church, um, face down and being used as the entrance stone so it was a disrespectful kind of act that christian worshippers would have had to have walked over the pagan statue in order to enter their church during the excavations of the site uh, which began in the 19th century archaeologists uh, obviously uncovered a huge number of tile fragments and there are some nice little touches on the, the undersides of uh, quite a few of them um, that are on display in the museum. Um, in particular, there are some marks of a Roman legionary's hobnail boots on one, and then on another, um, a clear imprint of a dog's paw, and on a third one, what people think is probably the hoof print of a pig's trotter. So that's um, my whistle stop tour of the site at Richborough. The uh, Roman town at one stage must have been impressive. Um, there's a large area beyond these walls um, that includes uh, an amphitheatre that hasn't been um, excavated yet and uh, it was clearly an important Roman port than the gateway into Britain and the origin of the Watling Street Roman Road um, so I really recommend the visit if you ever get the chance um, 
and um, I'll leave you at that point. Thanks for watching again and see you on the next video.